So what I have set up here is, is I have a small network with two routers in it. So I have my PC down here, 192.168.10.10. I have the first router that I'm connected to, my PC's default gateway, which is 192.168.10.1. And that is connected to router 2 via this link over our fast Ethernet ports to router 2. And then on router 2, I have four interfaces set up. And on each interface, I have a different network address. Now, these interfaces I've set up are called the loopback interfaces. We're actually going to go in and configure these in a moment, but these loopback interfaces are a bit unusual to use in data networking. What a loopback interface is, is a loopback interface is a non-dying virtual interface. Wow, that's a mouthful. And although those words are very descriptive, they may seem a little jargony. So let's de-jargonize it. So the, the loopback interface is a virtual interface. What that means is it's an interface on the router that exists only on the router. This is kind of like a VLAN interface on the switch. So if you remember, we configured the VLAN interface on a switch in order that we could telnet or SSH to that switch. And in the same way, we can create this loopback interface on the router. And that loopback interface on the router is a virtual interface. We put an IP address on it. It can respond to pings. And the loopbacks don't ever go down, and they don't have any other hosts on them except for one single IP address because there's no other place to connect another device onto it. It's a virtual interface on the router and only on the router. Well, why the heck do we use these anyway? And the, the nice part is, is that it gives us a non-dying interface on the router to do management with. So we can actually ping our loopback address and get a response from it. Now that may not be very attractive on a router that only has two interfaces on it, or maybe four interfaces on it. But when you have a router that has a lot of interfaces on it, and there's lots of paths through your internetwork to get to that one device, remember each interface that you have has its own IP address. And if your router has hundreds of interfaces, and one of those interfaces goes down, your router could still remain the up state. So you could still reach the router when one of the interfaces is down, but you just won't be able to reach it on that IP address assigned to the interface. We use the loopback interfaces to create an address that we can reach when some of the interfaces are down and that router is still reachable by us. Now, if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry about it. We're going to go configure these on the router and you can see how they work. Uh, a lot of times it's a little bit easier than trying to explain it. So in this network diagram then, in order to reach each one of these networks up here. Now, I, I guess I, I should point out one more thing before we move on here. I say loopback interfaces up here and I say slash 32, and then I list each of my loopbacks here with a slash 24. That's a little odd too, isn't it? Well, the loopback interface, since the router knows that it can only have a single IP address attached to that interface, it doesn't matter what we assign the mask to on the interface itself, on the routing table, our loopback interfaces will always show up as slash 32. We're going to configure them as slash 24s so that we can pretend like we have four networks out there. And that's really the ultimate goal here when we're using loopbacks in this lab environment. And I wanted to create a lab environment where you could use a sparse amount of equipment to create a large number of networks. And we can create thousands of these loopback interfaces so we can have large quantities of networks to populate our routing tables only using a few routers. Okay, so let's talk about now how we would configure router one with static routes in order to reach each of those four loopback addresses on router two. And what we'd have to do 